Hey there, fellow travelers. Mark here with Bulges World. Today, we're back in Lisbon, Portugal for the don'ts of visiting Portugal. Now, we spent a lot of time here in Lisbon. I mean, I was here for five years and I love living in Lisbon. I love traveling all throughout Portugal. There's a lot of really great things you do want to do when you're here. Well, we've got stuff, the 10 shops of Portugal, what to see when you're in Portugal, it's things that here in Lisbon, all kinds of stuff. What we want to focus on today are the don'ts. What shouldn't you do when you do come here to Portugal? Because it is a fantastic country. Great people, great food, great wine, great weather, all kinds of stuff. And the first don't I have for you actually is going to deal with the biggest complaint I get from tourists that come to this amazing country. And that is, don't think that everything they put on the table for you at a restaurant is free. Now, you know, when you go to the U.S. and you go to a Mexican restaurant, they'll give you chips and salsa and it's free. Or you go to a restaurant and they give you bread and butter and it's free. Here in Portugal, those things they put on the table, they are not free, okay? You will pay for the bread, you will pay for the butter, you will pay for the olives, the cheese, the ham, all those things out there. So do have a heads up for that. And if you look on the menu, they're actually in the menus now too, okay? So have a heads up. The thing is though, it's not usually that expensive for the smaller things. So we'll take the bread and we'll take the olives, but the cheese or the ham, those ones we kind of push off because those can add to the price of your meal really, really quickly because in general, it's a really affordable place to go. And that's one of the ways you can add on a couple, two to five euros just by accident. So have a heads up for that. Another don't I have for you is about eating. And that is don't think you can eat early for dinner. Look, I'm coming from the US and we eat dinner at five, six o'clock at night. That does not happen here in Portugal. The kitchens and the restaurants will close a lot of times between three and 7 p.m. Now, the restaurant may be open. They might have sandwiches for you or, or some desserts like their chocolate mousse that's so good here. But if you want to have the, the favorites of Porco, the Segredos de Porco, the Pork here, or, or the Sardinias, the Sardines and stuff like that, you're not going to be able to get that most places between three and seven. So make sure you're preparing to eat later in the day because otherwise you're kind of out of luck. Or you're going to go have to go to the tourist spots. You know, maybe it's a mall or maybe if you're here in, uh, in Lisbon, you're going to have to buy shit and stuff and you go to more tourist restaurants that will have food all day long, but it's not as much the experience that you really want here, but it is a thing that you do have an option for it. So do have a heads up for that. Another thing I'm gonna tell you about, you know, don't get it started. No, don't try to do things early is don't try to party early here in Portugal. The Portuguese, they start things late. They eat dinner late. They, they, they go out partying late, all kinds of stuff. So don't think you're gonna go out early when you're here. This is more of a late night start culture if you're gonna go out, cause I'll be honest, Portugal is a great place to come and have a good time, all right? And to kind of wrap up that time theme, don't expect much to start on time when you are here. Look, in Portugal, being fast relay late is what you're supposed to be. If you come on time, it's almost kind of, kind of rude, okay? So do have a heads up for that. Now, maybe business meetings and the train, that's a bit different in your plans, but in general things, if you meet the Portuguese and they invite you out to dinner, they say, hey, come over to my place like seven, well, they'll probably meet us yeah, come about 7.30, okay? So do know that there's kind of a, a time difference here from what people say versus what they actually do when you are here, okay? So those are some time things I want you to know about. Now, Portugal is famous for its wine, okay? And there's lots of different great wines here, but I want to give you a few doubts in terms of the wine and stuff like that when you are here. One, don't think that port wine is the end-all, be-all of Portuguese wine. I mean, yes, people have a bottle of port at their house and things like that, but it's not like they're drinking it every day. You're drinking normal red wines and white wines and green wine when you are here in Portugal and it's fantastic. But the port wine, I know in the guidebooks and stuff, they're like, oh, you must drink the port wine. You must have port. Yes, if you're in Porto, definitely go to the port wine caves, okay? In Gaia across the river, go do that. It's fantastic. But don't think that port wine that everyone's knocking it back every single day. They're drinking other kinds of wine, okay? So I want to get that out of the way. And one of those wines, the green wine, that has another don't for you. Don't drink green wine unless it's cold. Green wine is a young white wine, okay? So it's got a little bubble to it. So I like to think of it as like 80% white wine, 20% like a, like, a, like a bubbly wine kind of stuff. And it's really good, but you need to drink it cold. And so when they serve it to you, it should be cold one. And then a lot of places they'll put a sleeve over it to keep it cold because that's the way you enjoy the wine when you're here. My last little wine thing I have for you is don't feel that you have to buy expensive wine when you come to Portugal. Portugal makes some of the greatest wines in the world. We drink it anywhere we go. We see Portuguese wine, we're gonna drink it. One, because it's fantastic, and two, it's got a good price. 
So when you go out to eat here, you can get the house wine, no problem, it will be good. So don't worry about busting your budget on your wine when you're doing that. And that kind of goes into another donut of Portugal. Don't think you're gonna bust your budget. Portugal is a very affordable destination to go to. Transportation, actually flying here, um, the hotels, the Airbnbs, the hostels. Oh my gosh, the hostels in Portugal are fantastic. It's not really that bad. And the thing is, I wanna say is, don't think it's cheap. It's just really affordable, okay? Because so many tourists have come here to Portugal now. It has raised the prices up a bit for restaurants and hotels in popular places like here in Lisbon, the Algarve. But still, it makes a very affordable family vacation or solo vacation or a buddy's trip and stuff like that. So don't worry about your, your wallet too much in terms of the money side of it. And I guess that's another don't I have for you. You don't have to worry about your wallet too much either when you're here in terms of safety. Portugal is a very safe country. Now, of course, if you're on the metro or something like that in Lisbon, or if you're walking in a busy tourist area, obviously do use your usual kind of street smarts and travel smarts. But in general, Portugal is super safe to visit. I know I loved living here for five years because I never wore it. My kid wants to go play, no problem. We want to go do something else, no problem. The kid, you know, wife wants to go do stuff by herself, no problem. That's what's so great about Portugal. Whether you're in Tavira in the south, or you're going up to Braga in the north or wherever, you can have a great time and you can have a safe time. And that's one of the things I really love about coming here that I don't have to worry. Though it is very safe, I will say I do have one big safety dump for you. Don't be lackadaisical when you're walking on the sidewalks. And this is in twofold. One, the drivers here, they're a little bit crazy. There's a little rally driver in them sometimes. When you take your first taxi, you'll understand when you're here. But the thing is, when you're walking on the streets, you gotta be careful when you're, when you're there because the cars and the buses. But what actually is really kind of the thing that gets tourists is actually the pavement here. They use a lot of tile. They use a lot of small stones and stuff like that. And it looks really, really cool. But the thing is, if it rains and it gets slick, it is very slick. And I've seen people wipe out young, old, all kinds of stuff. And nobody laughs because it happens so often. So do be careful. Maybe try to bring some like non-slick shoes when you're here, just because that can be one of the things. And I will say one thing with the driving, um, don't be afraid to rent a car when you do come here to Portugal so you can go explore. Cause there's a lot of small towns you might want to get to. Going to Obidus and having some ginger, the ginger, the, the, the cherry liquor and the chocolate cups. Oh, we have a medieval festival there. That's great. You just drive there or Evra, or you want to go see some of the castle ruins in the South and stuff. Rent a car really makes it easier to kind of explore Portugal a lot better. Okay. So don't be afraid to rent one when you come here, but I will say this, don't drive your car in Lisbon. Lisbon traffic just sucks. Okay. And the drivers are crazy. It's just really frustrating. So what I recommend, if you're going to use Lisbon as your base and fly in and then go explore the country, I would say fly into the airport, get your car at the airport and then go explore the country and then come back to Lisbon, drop off the car and then explore Lisbon without the car. Cause the parking, the driving, the headaches, it's not worth it when you're here. Okay. So just know that when you're in Lisbon, but great to explore the country, which is another don't I have for you. Don't forget to explore more than just Lisbon. I know all the cheap flights and flights from the U S and Canada and stuff. They're all kind of flying in here to Lisbon because Honestly, it's one awards for being the best weekend destination in Europe because it's a fantastic city, but the whole country is fantastic. So if you get a chance, go explore the north. Yes, Porto is just gorgeous. And yes, you can have the port wine there and see the bridges and stuff. You can go to Braga and see Bon Jesus. You can go walk up to the, the church there. Guimarães, the true birthplace of Portugal. You can see that or see the university town of Coimbra and the Quebra Coast. It's like the hill like this, the backbreaker. Oh my God. When you get up there and you see the library in the Queen Bridge at the university, oh my God, it's gorgeous. Or if you're gonna be here by Lisbon, there's lots of great day trips. You go to Centro and see the palaces there. Obviously the coastline anywhere in Portugal is amazing, okay? But also if you wanna to go towards the south, seeing the Algarve and the beaches there and going to Lagos and taking the boat trip through you know, the, the grottos there, it's just so cool. Or going to see the Bone Chapel in Evora. There's so many cool things to see here. I get sad when people only stay in Lisbon. So. Don't forget to explore outside of Lisbon when you're here. Now, some other don'ts I have for you. One, don't worry if you don't speak Portuguese too well. The people here in Portugal do speak English very well. And honestly, they have some of the best accents when they speak English. We're talking like Netherlands, Scandinavia, and Portugal have the best accent for non-native speakers when they speak English. It's awesome, okay? And I'm gonna tell you, if you are scared, don't be scared of the mm, 
the nasal sound in Portuguese. Look, as long as you're trying to speak Portuguese, they may chuckle, but they'll really appreciate it when you are here. So, you know, a few words like obrigado is thank you, por favor is please, you know, de nada is you're welcome. And I know it sounds like Spanish, but it's not. And that's our next don't. Don't think Portugal is just an extension of Spain. I've lived in Lisbon. I spent months and months and months in Spain and they are not the same, okay? You gotta understand the culture is different, the language is different, the people, the temperament, all kinds of stuff is very different here in Portugal than it is in Spain. And that includes the language, okay? Portuguese here, Spanish there, all right? And speaking of languages, another don't I have for you is don't expect to speak or hear much Portuguese when you go to the Algarve. The south of Portugal has become kind of a retirement community for a lot of different uh, nationalities in Europe. So you'll hear German, you'll hear Spanish, you'll hear English, you'll hear Swedish, you'll hear all kinds of stuff, but you might not hear too much Portuguese. So that kind of surprises people when they go down there, but it is one thing I want to give you the heads up for. Since Portugal, like I said, is pretty affordable to visit, I want to say is don't use big bills, okay? Don't bring big Euro bills when you come here. The 50s, the 100s, the 200s, don't bother because most of the time people are not going to have change. So make sure you have lots of 10s and 20s and 5s and stuff like that to pay for your tax, you pay for your pastel de Belen or your pastel de Nata and things like that because you don't really need the big bills here. What's cool is if you go to a bank ATM here, they give you 10s and 20s, but don't expect to get more than 200 euros out of most of the ATMs here because they limit it at 200, okay? So there is that. But don't worry, there are tons of ATMs throughout the country, so you won't have any problem finding an ATM when you are here to get money out. Now, one of the things you're gonna need that money for is the food when you're here. And my next don't for you is don't be carb intolerant when you come to Portugal. Look, rice and fries, fries and rice, rice and fries with more rice. Look, if you get meat here, it's gonna come with fries, fried potatoes, and probably come with rice as well. So you're gonna have a lot of carbs when you're here and it can get a bit heavy on you. So just have a heads up for that. If you want less carbs, I would get a fish dish, the Dorado, a Bacchial, the Bream, Sea Bream, Sea Bass, the, the codfish and stuff like that. The fish tend to have more of a salad and like boiled potatoes versus fries and rice. The thing is though, the fries and rice come with the pork with the black pork, which is fantastic. It comes with the bitoke, the beef that's here. So you can eat really, really well. And one of the things I want you to eat and want you to know when you are here is don't think sardines are just those little tiny fish that come in those little tiny cans. If you're here in the summertime, especially in June, sardines, grilled sardines are the thing to eat. And they'll grow them up about this big and serve it to you on a platter. And so make sure you order some. And a don't I'll have for you for that is, don't be afraid to ask your waiter to show you how to skin it, gut it, take the stuff out. Because if you're not from Portugal, you might not know. I know when I was here for Santos, my first time in Portugal, all the sardines were there. My friends gave me a plate of sardines. I'm like, what do I do here? The head's on them. And they're like, oh, this is what you gotta do. And they showed me and explained it to me. And so it's always been kind of a funny thing when tourists come, they get their sardines like, what the hell do I do here? Don't be afraid to ask your waiter, okay? Like, hey, can you help me out here, all right? Hey, when you're in those restaurants where you're looking for restaurants, don't worry if the restaurant looks a little run down. Look, usually those kind of run down mom and pop looking places, they're called Pashkas. That's where you wanna go for like the legitimate, real deal Portuguese food, okay? And those Tashkas are family run places. And yeah, maybe they don't have the money to make it all fancy and look like it's a, a brand new chic restaurant, but their food are 10 times better than those chic restaurants. So, Definitely hit those Tashkas. And don't worry if it looks a little run down or a little beaten up. It just is all the effort goes to making some great food when you're there. Also, if you're here with your kids and you got little ones, don't be surprised if the grandma or the mom that works at the Tashka comes out and feeds your kid for you while you're eating. Maria Jesus, God bless you. She would do that all the time for us when we were here in Lisbon. At other restaurants we'd go to, you'd have that. And you'll see parents here will feed their kids a lot longer than we do like in the US. And it's more like, oh, my kid just sits there. They just kind of feed them. It is pretty funny to see, but it is really nice because Joss and I got to have a lot of kind of dates with little kids there because because Maria Jesus was feeding Caleb and we were just there eating and enjoying ourselves. So my last few kind of don'ts I have for you. One is you're taking public transport here in Portugal. This is one thing I've seen with all the tourists coming here. You might not realize is uh, don't forget to give your seat up 
for pregnant ladies, women with small children, um, older people, things like that, because the Portuguese are very much into helping out the elderly. There'll be special lines for pregnant women. There'll be special lines for people with kids. And for some tourists, they don't realize that those seats are reserved for them, okay? So if you sit in those seats, get up. Or if you're in a metro and you see an old lady, just get up. I mean, it's the nice thing to do. And you'll see that the Portuguese will do that, okay? So be cool like the Portuguese, be polite by the Portuguese, and give those seats up for people. Another kind of tourist don't I'd say for you, and I've been doing my research, I see all these things. Oh, go to a photo show, go to a photo show. Look, if you're not sure what photo is, photo is this very melancholy music they have here in Portugal, and it's great, okay? I've gone to a ton of shows, and I've enjoyed every single one. But my thing for you is, don't think you have to pay to hear Fado. Look, a lot of restaurants will have a Fado singer coming up every so often, or a bar might have a Fado singer singing sometimes. So you don't necessarily have to pay for the dinner and the show. You can find Fado singers lots of different places. You might wanna ask your hotel, hey, we're gonna hear some Fado, you know, or a bar or something like that, and they can help you find a place, because I lived in Lisbon for five years, okay? I never paid for Fado one time, but I got enough that I feel like I know Marisa, I know her like this, okay? So you do have that opportunity. And my last stone for you, as a tourist, there's one thing that happens, is when you see that stores are closed or there's a holiday you didn't know about, <laughs> be ready for that here. Don't be surprised if there's a random holiday when you're here in Portugal. Look, Portugal has multiple Independence Days. They have multiple Saints Days. There's all kinds of festivals here in Portugal. And so there might be a random day when you're here that random stuff is closed. Just know it's not gonna ruin your vacation. It just might make it a little more complicated sometimes, but don't be surprised if there's like limited hours or for some reason there's not the store's not open that day because of some holiday. But honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you. If you're looking for a great country to go to that's safe, that's affordable, that has beautiful people, beautiful people looking, like, I mean, I can't tell you how many tourists have told me, please let one of the por Portuguese policemen arrest me. A beautiful food, fantastic food. The beer here is really good too. The wine, I mean, there's so much you want to do when you're here. It really is a fantastic country to visit. That's why I lived here for five years and I love it. It's very close to my heart. Liam, my youngest son, he was born here. Like it'll always be a part of me and it should be a part of you because this country is fantastic. So don't pass up on Portugal, all right? So if you want to learn more, maybe the 10 shocks of visiting Portugal, like about the bullfighters that catch the bulls when you're here. Yeah, don't freak out about that. They actually catch the bulls in the bullfights here. It's, it's a little crazy. Or if you want to learn about the food here in Portugal, or maybe just some basic tourist advice, what to know before you come to Portugal, check us out on our website at waltersworld.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and we really appreciate your likes, subscriptions. And if you do like travel videos like that, click that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and you'll get videos like this every Wednesday and Saturday from all over the world. So I'll say adeus, bye from here in Lisbon, Portugal.